Okay guys, in this DIY we're going to make this lighted centerpiece. You can actually make more than one. I have one done, but we're going to make another one. And it's probably not going to be this elaborate on the top. This top took me forever, okay? Because I like turned into some kind of construction worker um, building this up. Um, I'll show you in a little bit the details that I went into with it. It was way too elaborate. But we can do better and quicker a different way. But it is light up. I don't know if you can see them. There are bats hanging. And I don't have these two pieces glued together because I wanted to take this down to show you how I did this. This is actually a vase or candle jar. This is from the Dollar Tree. This is from the Dollar Tree. Everything is pretty much from the Dollar Tree or Dollar General or um, Walmart. All of it, a buck or 97 cents, whatever. These cuties are also everything Dollar Tree, Walmart. I got these the other day. I did not show them, but I will show you how to make one of these. We won't be as elaborate on the top on how I put that together. The lights came from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you what it looks like without a light hitting on it. Okay, so here it is. I know it's kind of lopsided in there right at the moment because I don't have everything fastened down. But it doesn't need to be. There is a couple different ways you can do this. Um, and I'll show you in the video. But there's the bats. And there's these cute cats. They actually are solar. And they have an on off switch. So you can, and it's a soft switch. So you can turn them off. Which I'm going to turn them off. Just like that. Isn't that cool? So, on with the showing you how to do this. So, like I said, um, uh, everything comes from the Dollar Tree. Or everything's about Dollar Tree, Dollar General. I don't think I have anything actually from the Dollar General. Um, I think everything came from the Dollar Tree. And yes, everything came from the Dollar Tree. So this is a strictly all DIY Dollar Tree. And I've seen these kind of similar to this at Dollar or at Walmart for like twenty some dollars and up. And I thought I can make something kind of similar to this without spending 20 some dollars. So what you're going to need is we're going to build a topper, which I went all out. Do you guys see how I built this? It has a lip. It has popsicle sticks built up to hold this lip. Plus these popsicle sticks. You can see how I went all out constructing and it's an A-frame inside. I went all out on doing this um, and then added the flowers to the A-frame, glued them on. All that, whoops, to be able to set over top of this, which I haven't glued this down yet because I didn't want to. You don't want to actually glue your uh, this part down because you want to be able to change the batteries. Um, I haven't glued down the um, lights yet but you want to make like this kind of a thing to hang your lights I made a little took my lights let me turn them off so you can see that better you want to make your lights gathered up together in a bundle at different lengths you're going to hang that from your grid that you're going to make however you want to make it and you want to tie your bats if you want to hang bats or whatever you want to hang if anything at all inside from here with 
whatever color string you want to use. I just use thread, black thread, hung it on there. It works wonderfully. So that's your basic on how to do that. Um, I tied that together, the bundle of the um, little lights. They are the lights like this from the Dollar Tree. This is what I used, these lights from the Dollar Tree. Um, for some reason, this one has a white pack. These last ones, the Halloween ones, have a black one, the last bunch that I picked up. Um, this is the Christmas ones. They have a white pack. So you're going to need some of these lights, um, the package of bat rings or whatever you're going to hang in here, skulls, witches, whatever you're going to need for your decoration. If you're going to do two of them, you're going to need two of these round vases. They're about, if you spread your fingers apart, they're about that wide. I don't know. I didn't measure. I can measure them here in a second. I also got two of these apothecary jars that are back there where the glasses and stuff are, where you find all the coffee cups and heavy glasses and things like that. I got a set of two of these. You don't need these lids. These lids are actually too heavy. My thought was to take the lid and use the lid up here on top like this to glue the flowers to, but it kind of, I don't know, it felt wrong to me to do that and then just set it here. It felt awkward. It felt like it was going to fall over, so I didn't do that. So the lids could be used for something else. Um, and I found that the jar works better setting this way than upside down. You can use it whichever way, but setting this way, it seemed to send more light into the bottom. You can fill this with whatever you want. You can E6000 this or hot glue this, however you want to do it. I am going to actually put a ring of glue around the bottom of this that this is going to set in because I want to be able to take them apart at another time and maybe add something down in here, another set of lights, you know, like a tea light, and I'll show that later. You're going to need popsicle sticks. Um, I have the little thin ones. So you'll need two of these, two of those, whatever flowers you want, popsicle sticks, glue gun, and Mod Podge. Yes, I'm using Mod Podge. First time I've ever used it, guys, um, and whatever brush you're going to use. Um, unless you want to wait a very long time um, for your Mod Podge to dry, I suggest getting your hair dryer, put it on low heat, hold on to this because your hair dryer could blow it over. Um, your hot glue, and what else is it that I've thought of? Um, a brush something to put your Mod Podge in, and one other thing that you'll need is your light, and there is another way you can light it up. Let me find those other lights. I'll be right back. Okay, the other light you can use in here is these, and this is how I judge what one of these to get, is you wanted to be able to stand one of these lights inside of here. So that's how I judged what size of these round vases to get. All right, let's get to moving on this. The first step you're going to do is you're going to take your Mod Podge. You're going to take your Mod Podge. You're going to put some in your dish. And you're going to cover this with the first layer of Mod Podge. So just go ahead and if you can put your hand in your jar, that's always a good thing. And just put your Mod Podge on. And you want to go ahead and use a really good layer. Because you want your jar to have that streaked look when you're done. And you want to cover the whole length of your jar from top to bottom. 
Okay, I have it covered all the way around and it's already starting to dry where I started and ended. So I'm going to turn this upside down on top of here. And because I don't have like several hours to let this dry and then turn around and um, put another layer on, wait another several hours. I'm gonna hit it on low and dry this. Okay, so this is completely dry and you can see that the Mod Podge has left a like um, glazing on it, which is really nice. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do for the second layer is we're just gonna dab and that will give it like a crackled look. And you don't want it too thick, but you don't want it too thin. Because if you do it too thin, you're not gonna get that crackled look so that you have kind of a coverage like that so this is entirely covered in Mod Podge and it's like dabbed on with a brush so that it looks kind of modeled I'm gonna hold this and because I don't have several hours to wait I'm gonna hit it lightly with the blow dryer um, when you're doing this make sure that you're checking your glass is not getting too hot Okay, this is nearly dry, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it finish air drying while we work on the flowers. What I've got is I've got some flowers, purple ones with the eyes, with some of this, leaves, and we've got purple spider on this one, and I've got some black roses. I also have a spare leaf left over from one of the other projects and throw them all in together to make this. My other one is just black and purple and silver skulls and spiders. So I'm going to grab those and we will start by making a base, which is going to be popsicle sticks. And like I said, you're going to build yourself a base that's going to set on top of the jar. And that's nearly dry. And you're just basically going to be like you were in, in school. And you're going to build like you're going to build a little house. So I'm just going to go glue on here. That was stuck to my finger. And no, I'm not doing a replay on that. That was funny though. So we have our base made and I'm just gonna keep going and glue some more across here so that I have something to lay my lights on if I choose to or something to hang other decorations from such as the bats or whatever I decide to hang in here. Or if I decide to put my flowers on here, um, something that will give me a something to work from to put those flowers on. So. And we have that. So that's what we've made. Kind of looks like a little palette that will sit right on top of here like this. And if you want this to sit even more level, you want to put an extra one across the bottom. That will give you whoop, a little more of a, see what I'm saying? It'll give you a little more of a base to set on. More stability, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. More stability. 
and we'll just go ahead and do that. Like so. And it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see this part. This way, I have hot glue stuck to me everywhere. And stuck to everything. This will give you some stability on the top of that. So when you start putting this together, this will be stable on the top of your jar. And that jar is pretty much dry, and I just stuck glue all over it. So, I am going to go ahead, and this jar is going to have this in it, instead of the hanging lights. When you buy um, any lights, make sure you know what size batteries they take, because these take triple A's. And these light up by twisting. So, you definitely need to be able to reach in there and do that. Okay, so, I kind of not sure if I want to keep this light white. Or if I want to change the color. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and make the flowers. I'm going to turn my light off. And I want to get what I'm going to hang in there done. And that's going to be more bats to get me some bat rings. There's one. Two, three, my black thread. And all I did for this was I cut the back off. I looped some string so that it was double because thread is thin enough as it is. And you're going to want to knot it at a couple places so it doesn't um, tangle up as much. Because I'm going to use um, the stand-up light. I'm not going to need to worry about hanging the hanging lights from this. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue with just a dab of glue in the center of my back of my bat. Lay my thread into that hot glue, kind of wiggle it around a little and let it set. I'm gonna do that with each of these. After I've glued the string to each of these, I have tied them off on the little grid thing that I've made the top by looping the string through, making them each at like a different height, length in the um, thing, making sure that they're not going to be too far down in because I don't want them actually touching the bottom. And I do that by saying, okay, how tall is the candle? He's too far down actually. How tall is the candle? Bring him down a little bit more. Right about there. I think it's good. Don't want him any longer than that. I actually have one that may be too long. I have to check. He's a little bit longer, but I think he's still okay. That gives you a good way to measure about how long they need to be. And then trim off my extra. And if you'll notice, this is just about dry. And we'll turn this over. We'll turn the candle on. Set it down in there. 
put the bats down in there and see where they fall. I really don't like it being white, but you know, this way we can move the bats where they need to be inside the jar. So we're going to color the, the candle because I don't like a white candle in there. I really don't. So we're going to color that candle and um, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so what I did, and you probably can't see that because I've, I've lit it, but when I put this in, you'll see the difference. Do you see the purple color now? Let me turn this off. Oh. I took a purple permanent ink Sharpie, which I use, um, I use these when I color well, that doesn't even look purple in the light, but it is purple. Um, and I colored the flame part because this isn't, this is over top of the light bulb. This is just a plastic piece. The light is underneath. Um, I colored this with the purple, uh, Sharpie, which is permanent marker. Um, and then I covered this part with purple also. So when I light this and I put this in here, and yes, I'm going to have something in here. I just have to go get me some stuff to put in there. And I hang my bats. And if I have this lit, and you'll see this. I guess I have a bunch of Sharpies out. So I was debating on which color to use. That's what it looks like. Now let's go ahead and get some flowers for the top of this. Because I don't have to worry about um, turning on a switch like I do on the other one. I'm going to glue these little strings so that my bats don't move. Just put a dab of glue on top where the strings are. So that my bats stay in place. I'm going to want one skull which comes with leaves and decorations. We're just going to get all the stuff that I'm going to use. Clip it all off so I have it available. I want some of the plain black roses. Um, I don't need that long stem, so we'll just clip off that. And I'll take that flower petal with it. And that one. And we'll leave that skull there. I want some of these black roses. I want the spider. Oh, he fell off from his stem. So let's grab his stem and put that back on. Or maybe I want this stem. Doesn't matter. We're just going to clip a bunch off so we have them available and we don't have to mess with it later. Then I want some of the purple. There's one. Not all the purple ones have leaves with them. So whenever I can possibly get extra leaves from somewhere else, I do. Like that one, the leaf was apparently with something else. Probably with one of the spiders that I took off. Because you can see here, there's extra leaves. And I want this spider also. I think that should do us. So I'm going to set these all in a pile out of our way. And we're just going to start with whatever I'm going to put in the center. And get this all pushed up to the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to um, go get my green tape and start taping stuff together. Because I need some place to start as my center flower for the what I'm building up, I have taken the longer stem on this black one and I've added to it this spider. And I've taken my green floral tape and I've taped them together. I have also wrapped the long stem around this center piece here. And I'm going to hot glue this in place. I'm going to wrap it, make sure it's on there nice and snug. And then I'm going to glue it in place. At this point, once I have this center rose, glued into place top and bottom because I've wrapped it around. I've put glue underneath also to hold it. I start placing other roses on here 
and putting it on top of the jar gives me place to um, have it where I can work with it better. Also, it helps if you glue some of the petals in place. That also helps steady the flowers also in place too. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting more flowers on, just working my way around, using that center one as a starting point, and just building just like that by adding and building as I go around the whole jar, the whole top part that I'm building. Now, because I don't really want these to fall apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue gun and take all the glue crap off from it that it's picked up. Oh, what a mess. And I'm not actually going to glue it down, but I can see where this is going to be resting. I'm going to run a bead of hot glue all the way around the bottom of this jar which will give me a lip for the jar other for this jar to set in so that it doesn't fall off I don't have anyone that's going to be coming here that I have to worry about. Um, I don't have any littles. I don't have any people that's going to show up and knock anything over. So I don't have any of that to worry about. If you have kids or someone that, you know, you have to worry about, I would go ahead and glue them together. But that's what I'm going to do with this. And I'm going to do the same with the other jar. I'm going to show you the top of this is done. All I've done is gone around. And after I made the center, just stuck flowers in, glued them down, added flowers on around the top to fill in the top hole. Anywhere that the wood stuck out, I added extra leaves or like this leaf here or added extra smaller leaves just to cover the wood so that's done and i'll show that when everything else is done okay everybody that's how they look with the light off oh i should turn my kitties back on So that's how they look with the light off, everybody. This is the one with just the candlestick. And you can see the bats in there. And then this is the one with the lights that are hanging. And it has that really elaborate top that it took forever to make. I like both of them. I like how they both look. And Mr. and Mrs. Scully. And in a second, I will turn on the flash on my camera and show you what it looks like. Yes, I have stuff where I'm sorting to get ready for a vendor event. So hold on a second. I was talking away and I didn't even turn the camera on. With the flash on, oh, you can't really see his face. It kind of... But anyways, this is the one that I made just now. Um, you can see the little bats in there. And you can see that it's not really glued on, but it's not going to slide off. And that's got the purple. Uh, I used the purple Sharpie Magic Marker, the permanent ink. 
This is the one that I made before with the really elaborate. I showed you how that was put together, but I didn't build it again because that took me over an hour to do that. This only took me maybe 10 minutes. Big deal in the difference of the time. So there you go, guys. I thought you would like that. Um, I'll try to make this video as short as possible. There's Mr. and Mrs. Scully. They look really happy between those with their little twin kitties. I haven't named them yet, but I will. Everybody, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this out with everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.